So let's talk about what Games Workshop's done to Space Marines. We've got improved captains and foreign importer options, but also big nerfs to some strong units and one of the best detachments. Are Space Marines going to wind up better or worse after this? Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, where today we're talking about the Space Marine changes from the recent balanced data slate. As with quite a few factions here, they've done really quite a few different rules changes, some things that actually go in and change specific bits about certain rules, a whole bunch of core rules changes which impact certain units, and then some points changes and errata. There's quite a lot going on, so let's talk about where marines were to start with in competitive 40k before this, and what's happened to them now. As I've been talking about in previous videos, Codex Space Marines have been in a bit of a weird place in 10th edition so far. Basically, Games Workshop's divergent chapter system means that it's been really quite hard to balance Space Marines, hard to make them good within their own codex without making certain divergent chapters better, and overall the tournament data for the core codex Space Marines hasn't really been too positive, lowish win rates are around about 44% if you eliminate all the divergent chapters, and that's normally be in a position where to be grounds for Games Workshop to help them. There's not really all that many people who are winning big tournament events, with things like, say, Ultramarines or Salamanders, and that is kind of telling that people just aren't really finding them very strong at the moment. They're still one of the most played factions out there in Warhammer 40k, just because so many people are dedicated to sticking with Space Marines thick and thin. It is just a bit odd that Codex Space Marine detachments still do pretty well. Iron Storm Spearhead maybe being the most standout, that one tending to be run for Black Templars with all their multi melters or Dark Angels alongside Azrael and a Dark Shroud. Both of those have won multiple tournaments since the last data slate, and for the most part do generally tend to evolve more around core codex space ruin units compared with the actual divergent units, but the things that they do add are enough to draw people away from the core codex. Stormlands Task Force also does really well for Space Wolves specifically, given that they've got good melee mounted units, and again that is a core codex space ruin detachment, but it's being run by the Space Wolves and not the White Scars. It means the general perception of Codex Space Marines is they're not really all that great in terms of army strength, even though I would admit that that win rate of 44% is probably a little bit lower than it should be due to a bit of artifact. The best players around are quite likely to jump between divergent chapters if they think it's going to give them a slight edge on the tournament scene, so it might mean that a few of the very best tournament players go to other chapters, even if they're just a little bit better than the core codex. Marines also tend to have a slight overabundance of newer players as well, which likely feeds into the statistics just a little bit, even if it might not be an enormous factor. Looking at actual core codex space marines though, there's basically four detachments that tend to get used fairly regularly, Gladius, Ironstorm, Firestorm and Vanguard, all of which do bring their own strength. In terms of success rate at tournaments and things, they do seem to be at least fairly well balanced, somewhere around the 45% sort of win rate kind of mark, and most of them showing up at least somewhat regularly in terms of top tournament placing, though as mentioned not really winning all that much given how many Space Marine players there are out there. For the actual choice of Codex chapters, it tends to be Ultramarines, then maybe Salamanders that gets the most play. Ultramarines just have more options full stop versus the rest of them, particularly Marnius Kalgar and Uriel Ventris that tend to get play, and Salamanders arguably have the next best in Vulcan Estan and Adrax Agaton. Perhaps Raven Guard might be one to look at after that, as Shrike is a quite good datasheet in himself too. With that being the state of things, I'd argue that the balanced data slate doesn't really seem to have helped out Space Marines in an enormous way here. Perhaps one wish list thing that I had would be some sort of reason to take the core codex just a little bit more than the divergent chapters, but it doesn't really seem like they've done too much at that end. The only thing that they have done to maybe nudge things in that direction was to lock out a few divergent chapter units that had restrictions on certain units in their own detachments, and then just expand those same restrictions to the core codex ones too. We'll talk about that in a second. For the Space Marine rules updates though, they came from a number of different sources. The core rules changes, of which the Captain Stratagem change is by far the most important I think. A bunch of datasheet changes, such as transport capacity changes for the Repulsor and the Impulsor, and an errata document that added a few other things like a change to the Phobos Captain. Otherwise the balanced data slate brought some big nerfs to Ironstorm Spearhead unfortunately, and then just a few scattered points changes, mainly nerfs, there were a couple of buffs, and for the most part keeping most Space Marine units kind of as is. Jumping straight into those changes, and first up here's the bit about locking out divergent chapter units from the core codex. This was added in an errata to Codex Space Marines, and it basically means that some of the divergent chapters can't take certain core codex datasheets, regardless of whether or not they're using the detachment from their digital index. 
Black Templars lose a few options here. They can't use any librarians, as is kind of dictated by their law very heavily. Burn the Witch and all that. But now it seems they're also fully locked out of any vehicles that don't have multi-melters that they can take their own multi-melter upgrade version for. It's not really all that bad news for them, given that for 10 points, the multi-melt is a pretty reasonable upgrade over the heavy stubber it replaces. I guess the biggest nerf for Black Templars is that their repulsor is now 20 points more expensive than the standard Space Marine version, so that one falls a bit by comparison. Otherwise, Death Watch can't use scouts, devastators, or tactical squads. No scouts is definitely a nerf to them, when they probably didn't really need any further nerfs heading their way. And Space Wolves can't use Apothecaries, Devastators, or Tactical Squads, including things like their Stormlands or the other Space Marine detachments. For the most part, while they're spamming loads of Thunder Wolves, though, maybe that's not the biggest deal in the world. I guess this gives Core Codex Space Marines one advantage over these chapters specifically a little bit, though it does kind of depend on how relevant those units are. Tactical Marines and Devastators, I still wouldn't say, are stand that good by any stretch. Though I think it does make sense that Black Templar librarians are no longer an abomination of a thing. It did seem weird that they were allowed given that they hadn't been in the past. One of the single biggest changes though were the ones to captains and command points. Compared with most of the other armies out there, I feel like this is perhaps bigger for Space Marines than most, given that they've just got so many captain data sheets that you might be able to use farming up free stratagems for their units. The main changes to the Captain Free Stratagems rule are that it's no longer locked to battle tactics, so literally everything that targets their unit is now fair game, and that opens up a bunch of the other core stratagems as well, which is fun. But the other two bits are nerfs. It's only minus one CP to the cost, so it means that any two CP stratagems will still cost you one command point, even if you're discounting them with the Captain. And you can now no longer use this rule to double up on stratagems, so say for example if you had a Captain on one side of the battlefield, wanting to use Armour of Contempt after you've already used it elsewhere in your army this phase, then he's not going to be able to activate that. It's certainly got a few positives and negatives, though broadly speaking I'd say it's a buff compared with before. Their list of options has certainly expanded. In terms of new options for Space Marine Captains, the core stratagems are kind of big. I'd say Overwatch is a particularly nice one to be able to access for free. Could be very good for a Captain leading a bunch of aggressors or Flamestorm aggressors about. Free Overwatch seems very intimidating, backed up by an Apothecary Biologist for the lethal hits. Otherwise, you could use the Grenade Stratagem for free. I believe that Rapid Ingress works even though you're off the board. Heroic Intervention is only one command point now, so it could mean that Captain units could basically defend a unit nearby and threaten to do that for free if they're not already used their command point. Or you could get a 1 CP counter-offensive, so threaten to interrupt a lot easier. Otherwise, for the detachments, it's maybe a bit more of a mixed bag. Gladius, I feel like, is probably an overall winner. You gain squad tactics for the reactive move and adaptive strategy for the changing up a doctrine, both for free. Particularly for jumping into one of the other combat doctrines, I feel like that's at least a fairly well-used one. And that one seems like a nice one to be able to access. Firestorm maybe didn't come out quite so well out of this one, though. It will now still cost you one command point, even with a captain in the unit, if you want to use that Devastating Wounds Torrent stratagem. So a bit of a nerf for the Devastating Wounds Flamer aggressors there. Most of the tactics are battle stratagems, so you don't really gain too much. And you also can't do things like using that plus one to wound in multiple different places on the board in a single phase either. Though I guess captains did gain the core stratagems. And free overwatch could be quite big when you're hitting with strength 5 flamer aggressors. Vanguard could potentially use calculated feint, guerrilla tactics or a deadly prize. Though precision will cost you one command point now. Previously you could have that free with a captain for your whole unit. And then there's a few more options from Stormlance and Anvil. Stormlance, you can use the Windswift Evasion, reactive 6-inch move one, and Anvil, you could use extra OC or the fallback one in the enemy fight phase. Overall, I would say that it's probably made Captains a bit more useful than less. Still seem pretty strong overall, with things like Blade Guard, Terminators, or Aggressors, maybe. I feel like Firestorm might be one of the places where it's the biggest side grade, though. Three devastating wound torrents were quite nice. Otherwise, one nice upgrade for quality of life were the Impulsors. They went to Transport 7 from Transport 6. A really good change on Games Workshop's part, I think, fixing the issue where you couldn't have 6 Blade Guard plus a character, effectively meaning that Blade Guard and Impulsors just didn't go together, as he couldn't really afford to drop 30 points worth of Space Marine to justify them taking up the space. I feel like that looks like a really credible option for getting them into combat now. It means that you can pay for an 80-point Impulsor rather than a Land Raider that's going to be 220 points or more. You don't get the move drop then charge, but it still gives you a cheap and useful Battlefield Bunker to get them into combat with a little bit of fire support, and it tank shocks a bit better now. 
This change also seems great for the Inner Circle Companions for the Dark Angels. You could have them with Azrael or another character and have a seriously scary little melee squad jumping out with six models and a character attached. They're looking a lot nastier with those AP2 swords. Side by side with the Impulsor, the Repulsor was also buffed as well. That one drops down to 180 points from 190. I think that that's a pretty positive change given that 190 I thought it was very usable previously, if maybe not stand out versus things like the Land Raider Redeemer. 16 toughness 12 wounds on the board is a good defence at that cost, and it does have really quite a lot of volume fire and a few scary guns as well. Not a bad general purpose damage dealer while it's delivering scary units to shoot the enemy and potentially protecting them by allowing them to embark if they're charged. On top of that, the transport capacity went up from 12 to 14, meaning that you can now have 6 aggressors or 6 eradicators plus a character in it now. And again, that could be kind of nice. Even if Firestorm has taken some hits, it feels like the Repulsor has got a little bit better for it. Talking of hits to the Firestorm though, one of the worst changes for Space Marines was the Land Raider Redeemer going up. Previously this was 260 and now it's 285, a big 10% points nerf there. I feel like Space Marine armies in general are going to feel that a bit. It was probably the most go-to Land Raider delivery system if you wanted one. Trundling up the board to put down a unit to charge into combat and then having an absolutely massive flamestorm threat in the midfield, barbecuing entire squads of infantry and being an absolutely godly choice for Overwatch. At 285 I think it's still usable but they've definitely taken the shine off it. Feels like it might still get used as an actual transport before. There were definitely a fair few competitive lists where people were literally just running them empty though, kind of showing just how nasty it was as a threat in its own right. For bringing a bit of balance to the Land Raiders though, they've also chosen to drop the cost of the Land Raider Crusader down to 220 points. That one seems reasonable enough as it was the least used Land Raider by quite a way, just because it's got a lot less threat against anything that's got any sort of high saves or toughness. The volume fire from all those Hurricane Bolters is a big threat against Hordes though. It is now very cheap and tough for the cost. It does come with the extra transport capacity so you could have an aggressor unit with two characters attached if you wanted. And I feel like overall after the changes the three versions of Land Raider all do remain usable. They're a good amount more balanced than they were previously. Depending on the unit being transport I could see maybe a few more people choosing to go for perhaps the standard Land Raider over the Redeemer given the 45 point difference. Or maybe the Crusader if they literally just want a Land Raider and its damage output isn't the most important thing. Perhaps the biggest set of nerfs to Space Marine strength overall though were the Iron Storm Spearhead nerfs. As mentioned this was one of the Space Marine detachments that tended to be topping the most tournaments, though usually in the hands of either Dark Angels with Azrael and a Land Speeder Dark Shroud, or Black Templars with a bunch of tanks topped with multi melters and maybe a couple of their unique data sheets thrown in as counter charge perhaps. First up, two of the three good enhancements were nerfed. The target augury web previously gave a Tet Marine an aura of lethal hits to all vehicles within 6 inches. Perhaps one of the scariest enhancements in the game, though it did have a big price tag to match it at 40 points. Now it's dropped down to 30 points, but you have to nominate one vehicle in your command phase within 6 inches. And it's just that one singular vehicle that gets lethal hits. I'd say for just a 10 points difference, that's really quite a nerf. It could have affected really quite a big chunk of your army, say multiple repulsor executioners or multiple gladiator reapers with that before, and I feel like it's far more mediocre when applied to one vehicle. Master of Machine War got a similar kind of nerf as well, previously this was an aura of everything within 6 inches can fall back and shoot or advance and shoot, now it's just one vehicle nominated in the command phase and its points cost drops down from 30 to 20. I feel like overall this one's still worth having, though as with the other one it's massively reduced, you can't be advancing multiple different vehicles and keep them all within range. And it also has the disadvantage that you can't move the tech marine to coordinate with the vehicle in the movement phase and then still use the buff. You actually have to be within 6 inches of the vehicle in the command phase so before you've done any movements. And it means that if you're out of position before that then you can't use this buff on anything outside of 6 inches. At 20 points though giving one vehicle advance and shoot or fall back and shoot is still going to be a big win if you do have a vehicle firebase clustered around a tech marine but it's not going to be as easy to use or impactful as it was. Finally, and for another third really quite big nerf, Mercia's weakness got changed to two command points. This was a pretty great damage dealer stratagem, giving you sustained hits on a 5 plus for vehicle units targeting something injured. That was often combined with the target augury web and oath of moment, so you could re-roll everything and then get sustained lethal hits on a 5 plus, which was rather obscene. You can still do that, though it's just going to be for the one vehicle that the target augury web chooses to nominate. 
and it's now going to cost you 2 command points to unlock that big damage boost, rather than the one it was before. It still doesn't seem absolutely awful with an option, and it's usually going to be best on something really big and scary, like say a Repulse Executioner, or maybe a Storm Raven or something, but 2 CP does make it way less good and it'll be much more of a drain on all your other resources, so kind of unfortunate stuff there. As if that weren't enough for Ironstorm Spearhead though, there's three more vehicle nerfs. We're a little bit unconvinced as to whether or not these guys really needed nerfs, particularly if they were already going to be hitting Ironstorm Spearhead with a bunch of rules nerfs, though I guess it is what it is. The Gladiator Reaper and Gladiator Valiant both go up to 160 points, so that's the same as the Gladiator Lancer now. The Reaper definitely was an absolute staple in Ironstorm Spearhead lists. Really nice to have that sort of volume fire to be able to clear enemy horde units super quick, Plus it works really well with Mercia's weakness. I still feel like it's usable at 160 points, though it definitely gets a bit more niche anywhere that isn't Storm. I feel like the Gladiator Valiant was maybe the one that least needed a change out of these. I feel like that could have happily stayed at 150 really. It definitely wasn't completely competitively on plays, but I'd say it was run far less than the other two. I don't know if it's just Games Workshop trying to move it so that all the Gladiators suddenly have the same points cost or something. It definitely didn't feel stand out compared with a lot of other Space Marine armor things. Then finally the Storm Raven gunship went up to 280 points. That thing went from 240, then to 260, then 280. Basically being punished for specifically being run in Dark Angel's Iron Storm where it can get a significant durability boost from the Landspeed of Dark Shroud. Otherwise, in general, people tend not to use it, given that it just costs a lot of points and isn't really all that tough for those points, so it could be a bit of a liability unless you can get the minus one to hit and cover on it. I'm still not really too surprised by the Storm Raven change, though. It seems that basically whenever a flyer choice makes regular appearances in tournaments in any way at all, Games Workshop bump up the points a bit. Overall, I'm not really too sure if these changes really needed to happen all that much. It does seem strange that the Storm Raven went up, but the Dark Shroud didn't. I feel like the two of them were never really all that strong unless you put them together. Otherwise, for Space Marine core rules changes, the Primarchs can move through Ruin Walls now, a handy boost to Gilliman, even if he is still a bit pricey at 350 points. Gilliman can also use those free stratagems for a bunch of things that aren't battle tactics now, so you could potentially be handing out free Overwatch to some seriously scary things and a few other interesting options like making things heroic in Devine, and a bunch of detachment specific stuff. It's definitely a big help for him though, though I still feel like he probably isn't quite worth 350. Otherwise, indirect fire only hits on a 4 plus on modified now, which is a nerf to things like whirlwinds and desolation marines, which could potentially hit a bit better than that. I guess space marines can mitigate that a bit more than some with Oath of Moment, though it does seem like it's yet another nerf to the Whirlwind that's kind of a pretty niche choice in competitive play anyway right now, given its high price. Feels like it probably could have got a points cost like the Guard units when they went down due to the nerf. The change to Devastating Wounds is a good thing for Chaplains that can get a 4 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds on the Terminator Chaplain. That's a pretty extra handy layer of defence that Terminators get, as they tend to be extra susceptible to devastating wounds. And I guess it's slightly bad news for anything that does have a lot of devastating wounds, like Gladiator Reapers and Stern Guard. There'll just be a few more targets that get saves against them now. Though I don't think it's really the end of the world. Otherwise, for a few core rule things, hazardous checks do mortal wounds on the model, which occasionally might mean that you could have some feel no pain save some of them. I guess perhaps Black Templar Inceptors could occasionally avoid a dead model with that, if they get lucky and roll a 6 on one of those 3 dice. For the most part, it's going to function the same though. The grenade stratagem was nerfed slightly, which I think does impact Space Marines a bit. It could be a nice way of dealing some damage for things like Outriders moving quickly onto objectives if you're using them, or for detachments like Firestorm or Gladius where you might be advancing around quite a lot if you're not able to throw grenades after advancing even if you can shoot, then I guess that's a small nerf to your options there. And Tank Shot got a bit of a side grade, it's better for things like Rhinos and Land Raiders trying to run over a few enemy troops, but it's a bit worse for Dreadnoughts and Invicta suits. In general, basically nothing in the game is likely to average the full 6 mortal wounds anymore, so it does feel like it's taken a small blow as a stratagem. It's still going to be useful for tanks in the right situation though. Then finally there were a bunch of rules changes and FAQs out of the Space Marine Arata. The Phobos Captain interestingly had a bit of a side grade. His rule previously allowed you to redeploy a bunch of scouts and Phobos units after you knew who had first turn, so basically perfect knowledge redeploys that have largely gone away now. But now you can only do it before you know who's got first turn, so you don't have that perfect knowledge, 
so it is a bit less impactful if you were using it on Scouts or Phobos, but now it's no longer limited to just Scouts or Phobos keyword things. It's now all Adeptus Astartes infantry, so you could use it on other things in your deployment zone, perhaps any other scary infantry threats that you're putting on the board. Overall, I don't feel like he's gained or lost enormous amounts of strength there. I guess he's probably a bit nerfed in the context of you only really wanting to bring him if you've got bunches of Phobos units around anyway. And I feel like redeploys are often maybe a bit more impactful when you're doing it on a massive great big threatening vehicles and things. But I feel like usually they have at least some value. Otherwise, in the Space Marine Arata, there were a few FAQs around Otha Moment, just being super specific as to what you can use it on. The upshot is that if you have a unit that gets split apart, like say having a character unit that has its squad shot out, a character unit of course still is Oathed, and a couple of things to off the table units. Units in transports can't be targeted by Otha Moment, but units in reserves can if it makes sense. I guess you could do some big brain moves, maybe setting up some scary Overwatch, I guess. But most of the time you'd just want to declare it on things on the board. Finally, there were just a couple of FAQs to Hunter's Instincts, a Stormlance Detachment Enhancement that allows you to arrive from Strategic Reserve as if it were one round later, something that was maybe just a little bit nebulously written, but they do clarify that it does indeed mean that you can come in battle round one with it as people are playing it, and they just double down to confirm that it can be used to rapid ingress turn one, unlike a whole load of other things that allow you to arrive from reserves turn 1 at light drop pods, this just kind of underlines it as really quite a good enhancement, pretty well worth it if you're playing Stormlance in general, though it's far far more impactful if you're playing Space Wars versus Core Space Marines, given that you've got the choice of Chaplin with Outriders from Core Space Marines, or a big scary melee unit of Thunderwolves, which is exactly the sort of thing that you want to be getting near guaranteed charges with. I think that's the way that most people would have been playing that one before. But I guess nice to have it clarified if people were indeed asking it as a regular question. Overall, I must admit, I don't think that this update was the best news for Codex Space Marines. Certainly not if you want their on-paper win rate heading more into the mid-tier. And still, despite all the changes, it does still look like the Divergent chapters will basically be doing core Space Marines but better, using all their detachments with free reign, or using their own detachments and unique units, at least all the ones that make sense. Just looking at the core Codex, though... I feel like most of the things are kind of minor changes that aren't going to actually make things too different for the majority of players. On the buff side of things, the repulsor going to 180 is definitely not bad, nor is the Lamb Raider, and Impulsor Blade Guard now being a viable option. I think might have some people trying that out, perhaps in Gladius. I say that in general, the captain changes to the stratagems are mostly an upgrade. Being able to do free stratagems on Overwatch and a bunch of other core things, plus a bit more choice out of the detachments definitely doesn't hurt, even if it's not all positive, without being able to double up on some of them or use the Firestorm Torrent stratagem for free. On the downside though, if you were playing Ironstorm Spearhead Space Marines with loads of tanks and dreadnoughts and a bunch of gladiators and things, then it does look like it's a fairly square nerf to that. Two of the strongest enhancements and one of the strongest stratagems both got significantly worse than they were before. Some common vehicle units that were often played in it, in the Land Raider Redeemer, Storm Raven and Gladiator Reaper all went up, and just overall seems like it wasn't particularly good news on that front. Overall, I probably wouldn't really expect Space Marines to change all that much power-wise. Most of the detachments, if they worked before they worked now, might have a couple more interesting options, and the Land Raider Redeemer still seems to be usable at 285, I suspect but also didn't really get much significant help, and Iron Storm feels like it's going to be a lot less powerful than it was. I think perhaps the biggest disappointing thing is are that it might have been nice to see some sort of points buffs to a few of the less taken units, things like Reavers, Firestrike Turrets, maybe Invader ATVs. I still think at some point, hopefully, they should give a bit more reason to run core codex space marine detachments, as there's always going to be some sort of balance issues until they do that. Let me know your thoughts, though. What do you make of the space marine changes out there? Look forward to hearing all your ideas down in the comments. Will your list be changing in any way due to these updates, or will things be staying exactly the same? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, 
an automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening and I'll hope to see you guys next time.